I'm just going to go for one more lap. Is that all right? Sure. I'm trying to think of negatives, but I can't. Like I'm having too much fun. Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. 2017 was another great year in the world of transportation technology. So let's take a look back at some of this year's highlights to offer some further insight into the tech and the experiences we had. As always, we kicked off the year in Las Vegas at CES, and after walking the floor, it was pretty clear that 2017 was all about connectivity and autonomy. So our production vehicle um, will not have a steering wheel or gas or brake pedals. It right. won't have it. Right. Wow, okay, and your solution is these guys right here, the LiDAR sensors. What we have on the car, from, from a sensor standpoint, is we have a LiDAR, we have cameras, we have radar. Right. Um, they all give us a 360 degree view of the, of the environment around us. Currently testing the level four vehicles on public roads in Michigan, Arizona, and California. So, you know, this is a real thing that's happening right now. There's no doubt that CES delivered on the future tech side, but with everything headed toward autonomy, the performance driving side of me was left a little concerned. So, there was only one thing to do. We needed to get behind the wheel of some supercars. <laughs> it had been a long time between NSXs, but in my opinion, it was well worth the wait. And we got to test it at the stunning Atlanta Motorsports Park. Now, normally an episode shot at a track requires me to put in countless laps, and this day was no different. But fortunately for us, we got to start with a wet track that steadily dried throughout the day. This allowed us to not only test all of its advanced systems in some pretty sketchy conditions, but also lay down some really scorching laps by the end of the day. With supercar performance and Honda reliability, the NSX is designed to take a beating. This car makes a lot of great noises. The engine pops and cracks just the way you would expect from a supercar. I love the sound when it changes gear. It's very direct and very fast, but it's the twin turbos that got me. You've got this kind of blow off valve thing going on. So when you let off the accelerator, you're getting this our next supercar proved a lot more difficult to get our hands on. The Croatian-built Remac Concept 1. Having already met with Mate Remac in Croatia, we had tracked the Concept 1 from Croatia to Miami to Vegas, but when finally an opportunity arose in Spain to get behind the wheel, we jumped at it. Packing up and heading to the beautiful town of Tivanese, we spent a magical day tearing silently through the countryside. With 1,000 horsepower getting fed to the ground through four wheels, it's a remarkable vehicle that deserves to be respected. And it was only a few months after this that Richard Hammond had a very serious accident in the same car. Stark reminder of the brutal forces at play in vehicles like this. <laughs> oh man, that is just like an absolute rocket ship. This is a car that, yes, it's electric, yes, it's forward thinking in design, but they've managed to pack so much technology in this. In fact, more technology than you would find in other cars from much bigger manufacturers. And on these tight and twisties out here, it's taking my breath away. With only a handful made, that's some of the most exclusive fun we've had on four wheels, and we'll be keeping a close eye on Remac. I've got a feeling they've got some big things on the horizon. Now we go from elite to extreme, with a couple of military-grade methods of mobility as we witnessed the first civilian flight on a personal jetpack and got to drive a luxury super tank, which, by the way, we weren't even aware was a thing. Oh, you guys got to floor it. Okay. Oh, oh. Hold up. <laughs> I often have the feeling that we are well overdue for personal jetpacks, so I was suitably enthused when we were asked to witness the first civilian flight of Jetpack Aviation's latest creation. Now, I must admit, it was hard to only be a spectator on this one, but it was fascinating to see the technology involved and how far we've come. And aside from crashing or setting your feet on fire, that actually seems kind of safe. Oh, it's kind of like that machine you use at the gym to do lift your legs up workouts. Yeah, there you go. I tell you what, you're a big tease, David. This is about as excited as I've been for a long time, and I'm not going to get to finish the job. One last out. I'll take your seat if you're willing to give it up to me. I think I'm OK. You think you're OK? <laughs> How 
How was it? It was wonderful. Specialising in tracked vehicles, How & How Technologies have built some incredible platforms that can be outfitted for countless applications, from personal mobility to remote fire hoses, equipment carriers and bomb disposal. But it's the ripsaw luxury super tank that gets the movie rolls and all of the attention. And let me tell you, the thing is a beast. Take a hard left right here. Hard left, yeah, yeah. Down to the water? Go right in. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> oh man, that is. You guys must be out here all day long, just. We, well, we do. <laughs> there are reasons we have to get out and test for sure. <laughs> is that what you call it? Most of what we covered this year requires one to have a little extra cash lying around if you want to partake. Not your typical daily drivers. And the Vanderhall Venice was no different. As a three-wheeled vehicle called an auto cycle, many people want to know, is it a car, is it a motorcycle? Well, that depends on what state you're in and how local laws are defined. Either way, this thing was an absolute blaster drive and they're now even offering an electric version. Vanderhall Venice is a three-wheeled little beast that only weighs 1,375 pounds, which is not very much at all, considering that I've got a 1.4-litre turbocharged Chevy Cruze engine. The turbocharger's got this blow-up valve, and it's constantly hissing. <laughs> and through this tight and twisty canyon, wow. I don't know that there's much more fun that you could have on three wheels. Hybrid technology has been a major focus of this series since its inception, and we typically feature it as it's applied to streetcars or as it's developed by future tech companies. But this year, we wanted to witness how it's applied at the racetrack in the most elite endurance race in the world in 24 hours of Le Mans. Toyota invited us out to embed ourselves with their team for the race, and I have to say, for as excited as I was to be going, the actual experience far exceeded my expectations. Here's a clip from Le Mans 2017 with the Toyota Gazoo LMP1 hybrid team. This is the car that destroyed the lap record here. It's on pole, it's the number seven car from Toyota, the hybrid, the TS050. With the hybrid, I mean, people might think, is that, is that for a, um, that efficiency or is it actually so that you can be faster around the track? It's efficiency. Yep. So uh, yes, you go fast around the track because you recoup your energy and you give it, you release it again. Yep. So it means you will use significantly lesser fuel. Um, so the lab record which we have done, yep. where we beat the old lab record for 1985, yep. we have done with rough, roughly 70% lesser fuel. Wow, that's incredible. Well, it's been 24 hours of highs and lows yet again at the 24 hours of Le Mans. And unfortunately for Toyota, the top step of the podium has eluded them yet again. But just to finish a race like this in any capacity is a remarkable feat. And that's exactly what Toyota did, throwing out record-breaking laps even up into the final hours. Now, we had to save the best till last. In what was without a doubt our highlight of the year, we were given the opportunity to travel to Korea to experience a technology created straight out of your dreams. The Method 2, a 13-foot tall bipedal manned robot. Hankook Mirai Technology gave us complete access to their facilities and their CEO, a real-life Tony Stark, not only allowed me to sit in it, but actively encouraged me to play with their creation. I was able to walk back and forth, operate the arms and the hands, but articulating the fingers was my favourite by far. But to be honest, it was almost a little overwhelming as I was witnessing a whole lot of boyhood fantasies coming to life. Oh, it's alive. <laughs> Oh, oh. Oh, my God. No way. A few days later, I was invited to return to the facilities to be one of the first humans in the world to be lifted by a bipedal manned robot. Now, to the average viewer, this may not look so impressive, but I can assure you the engineering involved to achieve this without the Method 2 falling over is simply remarkable. Was that the intention of the robot, to be used as a, as a sort of a, a safety device to rescue humans or go places where humans can't go, or was it more for recreational use? Fighting. 
Seven. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, the TransLogic 2017 year in review. The evolution and development of tech never stops, and our desire to cover it for you won't either. Keep an eye out for more content throughout 2018 and beyond. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.